Welcome to Arlington National Cemetery, located near our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. With the help of some of my friends and family all over this country, we are about to find out how much Americans know about our most revered final resting place for those who have served this great nation honorably and with distinction. You will be hearing from five guests today. A professor of communications and humanities at Rock Valley College, Tracy Cruz. United States Marine Corps veterans, Douglas and Carrie. An outstanding American, Catherine. And last but not least, a neonatal nurse practitioner and the smartest person I know, Marjorie. Your first question is, who can be buried at Arlington National Cemetery? Uh, somebody within the service, whether it's um, the Army, Marines, Air Force, um, Navy, astronauts, uh, something like that. So you have to hold some sort of title within one of the branches of service. I believe that anybody has ser who has served on active duty in the military, whatever branch of service it may be, and has been honorably discharged or received a medal, such as the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor, things like that. I also think that their spouse and their children can be buried there as well. Um, no, I know there's criteria, meaning um, if it's a government civilian, then they have to provide a write-up that demonstrates that individual's service to the nation that justifies them being buried here for armed services. Um, no, no, it's not bad. I'd gather it'd probably be anybody that has served in the U.S. military, so Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. I feel like if a person has served in the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, the Reserve Forces, and were discharged honorably, that they should be able to be eligible to be buried in the cemetery. By gosh, I think you got the hang of this. By the way, astronauts? Really? Who knew? Next question. Are they running out of space for all eligible Americans? A yes, because I think space overall for burial places like cemeteries or mausoleums is becoming an issue, which is why they're coming up with uh, greener ways to, to bury people. But I don't know, I could totally be wrong. To me, that sounds like a silly question because eventually everything runs out of space, but I don't think they are. However, like I said, everywhere runs out of space eventually. So maybe they are. I'm not 100% sure on right here. Yeah, if I remember my class from the other day, it's something around 95,000 plots that they have available, and just like everything else, they're running out of space. Offhand, it doesn't seem like they're running out of space, but as people uh, continue to pass away, I'm sure that's probably something that they have to consider. I'm not really sure of that. I feel like it's an expansive uh, burial place. I would like to think that there is enough space there for anyone who wants to be there, but they've been burying um, people there since I think the Civil War. So at some point they have to run out of space or at least plan for the future so that there can be annexes or, or parts of the National Cemetery that they can add to. All very insightful responses Common sense really is a common virtue. Today, nearly 22 million eligible Americans would have to compete for only 95,000 burial spaces available. If nothing changes, space for first burials will run out by the year 2041. Which leads me to my next question. Did you know about the proposed changes to eligibility and that every American citizen has a voice in this lengthy decision-making process? You have to meet certain requirements or eligibility, but I'm not sure what, what the eligibility is besides maybe being um, a person who's, who's served our country. No, I did not know there were any proposed changes to eligibility. However, with the last question of are they running out of space, maybe they are changing some things like who can be buried there, such as just active duty um, that have passed away or died in the line of duty and not their spouses and kids to help conserve space? Yes.
I'm not aware of them. Um, I haven't done any research around it, but perhaps it talks about um, putting some measures in place so that they don't run out of space. I'm not aware of any changes or restrictions um, uh, taking place in the cemetery, although I don't live in the area, so the little I do know about it, I'm not aware of those. The National Defense Authorization Act requires the Secretary of the Army, in consultation with the Secretary of Defense, to propose revised criteria that will keep Arlington National Cemetery active for the next 150 years. This process is very lengthy and it's very deliberate and happens in the public domain. A federal advisory committee is an independent body that is mandated by Congress. It has convened to look at these issues. The question of eligibility has been proposed for many years. Surveys taken by veterans, active duty service members, military families, and unaffiliated Americans have added feedback to this process as well. In the rulemaking process, it takes about nine months, but it gives invested Americans an opportunity to partake in the establishment of a new law that affects so many people in our country. It seems like the majority of Americans know about Arlington National Cemetery and have a general idea about what goes on there. And that warms my heart. But I wonder, how many people have actually been there? No, I have not been to Arlington National Cemetery, but I do know that it is in Virginia. Uh, so, yay me. And maybe one day I'll make it out there. But Yes, I have been to Arlington many times, probably too many to count, between being stationed in Fort Meade for school and then being stationed in Quantico for work. I have been there um, lots of times, walked the grounds, um, been to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, been all over the area, and walked um, quite a bit of that cemetery. As of this morning, yes. <laughs> okay. I have been to Arlington Cemetery. I was able to visit there four years ago now for my grandfather's funeral. So I have actually visited Arlington National Cemetery, but from a distance. We did the tour on a double-decker bus. You know, the... Um, time that we had there was short so we saw it beside it and um, I don't believe we actually went into the cemetery we saw it from o some overpasses um, and while the conductor of the bus described things I, it didn't strike me as a place that um, I could even visit in one day it, it just seemed so huge <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this virtual tour through Arlington National Cemetery. I'm proud to say I learned a lot through this journey, and my family and friends were so thoughtful and generous in their submissions. Their participation and enthusiasm gives me hope for the future of America. While we continue to honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, uh, we should be proud of ourselves, our families, and our country. For more detailed information about Arlington National Cemetery, visit arlingtoncemetery.mil. That's arlingtoncemetery.mil. If you plan your next vacation after the global pandemic to the D.C. area, I will personally give you a tour of America's most hallowed grounds, Arlington National Cemetery. Thank you and God bless.